This podcast will lay out a few essential issues concerning research ethics. Be sure to pause the podcast as needed so that you can take notes. Also, be willing to replay portions of this video. But regardless, take notes. Researchers have many issues to focus on, but the primary focus, the concern above all other concerns for any researcher using human or non-human subjects, is subject welfare. To ensure human subject welfare, the federal government requires human research proposals be reviewed by the Institutional Review Board, or IRB. This committee is comprised of scientists and at least one community representative. The IRB reviews all research proposals that will use human subjects prior to the project being conducted. No project may be conducted without prior approval by the IRB. To ensure non-human subject welfare, the federal government requires that all non-human research proposals be reviewed by the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, or IACUC. Again, this committee is comprised of scientists, at least one community representative, and a veterinarian. All research proposals that will involve non-human subjects must be reviewed and approved by the IACUC prior to the research project being conducted. Why do these committees exist? Clearly, to ensure subject welfare. Researchers are trained in conducting research which includes evaluating subject welfare. However, it is best to have other individuals evaluate the project and offer suggestions if they have concerns before bringing subjects into the research setting. Part of subjects' rights is referred to as informed consent. Our subjects must agree to participate in our research. To this end, we must communicate the nature of the research project to our potential subjects. This ensures that they are aware of the nature of our project and it allows them to make thoughtful decisions about volunteering to participate. To this end, all important procedures must be explained to our potential volunteers. We must disclose any aspect of the project that might influence someone's decision to participate. We must also offer the opportunity to withdraw or end their participation at any time during the project without any penalty existing. But what if knowing so much about the project would ruin our research project? Deception is allowed. We will need to use what is called a blind design, which we will be discussing further in another part of this course. But for now, a blind design keeps the subject unaware of any treatment condition he or she is in, or they are kept unaware of the true purpose of the project. To accomplish this, we must use a cover story or deception. The American Psychological Association, or APA, allows researchers to utilize deception when necessary. However, you must satisfy APA's three basic standards for using a deception. First, the deception must be justified, and there can be no alternative method available. This means that you may not create a deception just because it sounds cool, or it'll be fun. Also, it means that you must demonstrate to the IRB that you have considered other possible methods and none of the alternatives will allow you the amount of research control that you need. Second, any aspects of the research project that might influence a volunteer's decision to participate must be disclosed. So, any physical or emotional unpleasantries must be revealed to the subjects. You may not hide a detail because it would deter someone from participating. Third, you must provide a debriefing during which all is revealed to the participants. This, of course, comes once the data has been collected. So, a good deception satisfies all three APA standards. No alternative approach is available, all pertinent details are revealed, and you will provide a debriefing. Also, a good deception will accomplish its primary goals. It protects your research project's integrity, and so it helps ensure meaningful results. 
The trick to creating a good deception is to weave a story of misdirection while satisfying APA's standards. Often merely reorganizing some or all components of the project is all that is necessary while stating a new context for the subject's interpretation. Now, let's give you a little pop quiz for practice purposes. What is a researcher's primary concern? Subject welfare. Without resorting to abbreviations, what committee reviews non-human research proposals? The Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. How do we ensure subject awareness in research? Informed consent. What traits does a good deception incorporate? It satisfies APA standards, it effectively misdirects subject attention, and it maintains research integrity. What are APA standards for using deception? Justified. There is no alternative to deception. All pertinent details are included. And third, subjects are debriefed. What does informed consent entail? It ensures subject awareness before volunteering. It allows informed decisions by subjects. And it allows subjects to end participation without penalty. This concludes this podcast. Be sure to view the other podcasts.